Hey guys, a little behind the scenes look at the Calibrate Success Tech Center. And today we're looking at our fuel injector test bench. And I get a lot of questions about what makes it so special. Why is this different than the other benches that are out there? And let me start by pointing out a couple things on this bench that make it a precision measurement instrument. This is not your garden variety clean and flow bench. If we want to clean injectors, that's what this stuff over here is for. So an ultrasonic bath that we can get pretty cheap at Harbor Freight or Amazon or whatever does most of the work. All you need is a solvent, which is what methanol is in the windshield washer fluid, a surfactant, which is what soap is, and something that can clean it off when you're all done running it in the bath. You need to displace all that water and get it nice and clean. That's what brake cleaner does. If that doesn't clean your injectors, we are probably not ready to use them for a high performance application. Now, assuming our injectors are clean, they are ready to run in a precision measurement bench, not a generic clean and flow bench. If we want to create calibration level data, we need to run a calibration level system and procedure with hardware that can get the job done. One of the keys to that is using the right fluid. So you can see here, we use N-heptane. I buy it one jug at a time to keep it sealed and keep it fresh. This fluid stays consistent. And even if it evaporates, the only thing that's left is just N-heptane because it's a pure fluid. So when we're testing, everything that goes through the injectors has the same viscosity as the fluid that you're using when you're driving down the road. So you'll find that gasoline and gasoline blends and race fuels all have viscosities that are very close to N-heptane, and that's critical for getting a flow measurement through our injectors. Other fluids can be hygroscopic, which means they absorb water from the atmosphere, or they can have light ends that evaporate off and you end up with a very different fluid a little while later. So all that said, we've got our bench. We're looking at the business end of the bench on the back side here. And one of the things that stands out right away is all this plumbing. This plumbing is built just like you build the fuel system in your race car because that's how you use your injectors. We did not cheap out on our hardware. We use a 350 liter per hour inline pump from our friends over at Dietrichs. It's a made in the USA thing, not a cheap imported pump. We could have made this bench a lot cheaper by using offshore parts. We didn't. You see that there's AN lines everywhere. You can service this yourself with tools you already have in your shop. Hiding back there, there's our 10 micron filter, also from our friends at Dietrichs, and a fuel pressure regular, also from Dietrichs. All these parts are normal parts that you would have in your race car, and the same parts are used in our bench in order to make sure that we have consistent fluid delivery all the way up and around to our injectors at our rail. Our rail has a gigantic volume in it. It's a one inch bore all the way through this thing. We did that on purpose to help add volume and reduce pulsations. You also see our quick release connectors here. So these little quick release rings and our pre-drilled holes so that we can go to constant, or we can go to the usual injector heights. We just pick the hole here and put it in. It's a really easy in and out for the rail. We can disconnect it anytime we want and put it back in. And we don't have to sit there and mess around and turn thumb screws and hope it doesn't break. This has proven pretty rugged, very consistent, very easy to work with. The other key feature is our flow meter. These guys are expensive. I tested a lot of different flow meters. I was hoping I could get away with a more affordable unit. It turns out if we want good quality data, we need good quality hardware, and then we need controls that we built into our ECU here to run everything properly. One of the things we also do is that ECU controls one of our power supplies over here. Now you see there's two power supplies. We have a fixed power supply, which gives 13 and a half volts to our fuel pump, all the time. So even if we're running the injectors and the ECU and its drivers down at nine volts with this variable power supply controlled by the ECU, the fuel pump keeps the rail pressure very consistent. 
the variable power supply varies the power to not only the power supply of the injectors, but also the ECU and its drivers. So the behavior is the same as what you would get in a vehicle. So when we're creating calibration data for different voltages on our injectors, we're creating that data in the same way that you're actually going to use it. The big thing here, we have a heat exchanger on there. Now our tests don't take that long. So the fluid actually doesn't have a chance to change temperature that much, but we wanted to be consistent. So adding this is one more step in consistency to keep our fluid temps in check. The other thing, like I said, is we have the adjustable fuel pressure regulator. In our systems, we run a nominal four bar because this is a port fuel injection system only. This is not a DI setup. Remember, we're not just kind of checking to see if maybe these injectors are serviceable. This is not a repair device. This is a precision measurement instrument. So we're testing the injectors at the pressure that we expect them to run in our vehicle. So by testing at four bar, that's the nominal for a lot of modern injectors. Now we can use the Bernoulli math to go down to about three bar and get that info or up a little bit, but it's not for DI. If we wanted to get real calibration data from DI injectors, we would have to be running anywhere from 100 to 350 bar on those injectors because in our experience, it absolutely changes the behavior of the injector. We're not just looking to see if it's a repairable or serviceable injector at some garage. We are doing precision calibration measurements. So I hope this gives you a little bit better idea of what we got going on inside the bench and what sets us apart from everything else.